Hi, everybody. How are you? Um, we are a few minutes late because we're waiting for our guests. Um, Janine Hayes is coming to us from a remote uh, location um, in Colorado. And we're real excited to have her on. She's just a great medium and a fantastic paranormal investigator. And since she was a taking a, a trip out there that she wanted to um, come on remotely and and show us around and talk to us about some of her great stories and um, some of the sleuthing that she's going to be doing there. Oh, I should have said hi, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Debbie. I haven't talked to you for a few days. Yeah. Uh, it's so, been a busy time. Yeah, it has. Well, what's new with you? Um. Well, I've been doing readings, and I have a few scheduled for the weekend. Um, the other thing I'm doing is working on the Kindle version of our our awesome book, yes. Little Book of Be uh, Big Evil. I can't talk here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> At least true, get the title right. <laughs> yep. True Tales of the Dark Realm. So uh, it is on sale right now on Amazon.com. And uh, we've got the links posted and the other books as well that Debbie has written. Um, we did, this is my second book with you, yeah. Debbie. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, Many Ways of Manifesting, still such a great, great book, you know, uh, really getting out there. Uh, we'll do a show on it because it's so important to change people's lives. And it has I have so many clients that tell me I you know, I literally got, you know, what I asked for the first time. And we really need to get the word out so that people can really be uplifted and get really great energy out there. Use the law of attraction plus work with the other side and bring in um, whatever they want. It's, it's awesome. Right. Um, let's see. I want to just say um, I heard that a special person might be um, watching today, tonight, Scott. I want to say hi. Shout out to Scott, Scott you guys. Um, we do have a new sponsor, too. Hi, Cassie. How are you? Um, we do want to say that it didn't work out with, uh, with uh, Janine. Uh, to go on live on YouTube. So we have switched to Be Live TV uh, to be on the Facebook page tonight. I'm so glad that we are flexible and we can do that, you know. Right. Um, and I do like this better as well as it, as it works. It works better for me anyway. Yeah. I miss, our, you know, getting that big live audience. And, of course, you guys are all um, right now um, surprised if you come across this because we're supposed to be over on YouTube right now. Um, but we've gotten the word out everywhere. So hopefully everybody will be coming in. Now, this is our Wednesday show where we um, have really great guests. We have some rocking guests coming on, you guys, um, especially Kevin Lee with the do, do we know the name it's not automatic writing do we know that no, it's it's <laughs> like um spirit paintings and you don't use your your hands or anything it's um i don't know if you said a piece of paper there he'll he'll explain this to us uh, which we're both excited to to hear from him um but yeah it's as from how i understand it you put uh a piece of paper or something out there and spirit will um, paint or you leave crayons or markers or yeah. What a so, trip. I, what yeah, a trip. I can't, I'm so excited. Well, yeah. you know what you guys probably, and you guys don't know this, but I mean, um, my great aunt uh, was a cook at a spiritualist camp when, you know, probably before I was born. So I got to go out a lot. Then my mother took that cafe over and so I got to experience a lot of different uh, things out there. They did spirit photography, which was absolutely awesome, where you, um, you know, they take uh, take pictures and put it in Bible. They come back later and there'd be people in the picture. There's all kinds of, and, and materializing things. We definitely need to get someone on 
and experience that and do an event or remote somewhere where actually things like would fall out of um, musical instruments and all kinds of things. Um, but all those fun experiences and seances and stuff I went to as a kid, we'll talk about that sometime. That'll be a lot of fun. But um, let's see. So our book is out and for sale and soon on Kindle. Takes a little bit of finessing to get it on Kindle yeah. and and uh, and to get approved and all of that. So we will. And we have a lot of projects um, coming. Andy's tarot cards will be out hopefully soon. And um, I still have a book. And then I think maybe we're going to have to wait until uh, September and start uh, a book together. And um, I have a lot of events here in Southern California. Um, we're going to start doing a lot of ghost tours and a lot of um, uh, seances. And we call them spirit circles and things like that, which are just truly amazing. Right now, Andy, I have two in house investigations to do. So that's going to be real exciting. Oh, wow. I'm gonna be, yeah, I'll be doing it with my group, The Dead Talk. Awesome, awesome people. Janine is one of the members. So um, it's going to be really exciting and I can't wait. So nothing too much uh, going on because I don't, I can't grab any time in between readings. I don't know what's going on right now because usually my busy time will be from um, October through um, February, March, something like that will be really crazy. Well, I don't know what's going on in the universe, but it seems to be going pretty crazy right now. Lots of work and lots of things that are needed uh, to look at. So, oh my goodness, we do have viewers. Want to say hi to everybody tonight. Uh, surprise, we're on. <laughs> Someone <laughs> has a surprise emoji con going, and I'm like, yeah, because we didn't expect to be here either. But we are very um, flexible in you know what we're doing. So, um, did Janine get the uh, link for? Yep. Be live. Yeah, okay. she did. Oh. Can we can we go ahead and do our commercial because I'm so famously um, famous for forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> I I really well, do. And and me too because it's always on the tip of my tongue and and you know we have to keep our sponsors happy. So um, and we've got a brand new sponsor this week. Uh, we're we're pretty excited about it. This one is um, by Stacy Carr. Her website is paparazziaccessories.com. And we have the link below uh, in the description. And this is where you order accessories. And Debbie has a few of them on. She's got, um, yep, you got the necklace. And um, it's you It's a really long one. Yeah. <laughs> And it's just fun, you know, fashionable, $5 accessories. Uh, it's just amazing. Yeah, great right. price. She goes on live um, and she does a live uh, Facebook where she lets people pick their, uh, you know, their necklace and sends them to you and you just buy them right there. She sends you an invoice and it's really, it's $5, but you can buy online and um, I just love it. Um, I got hot pink and I got crystals and all kinds of neat things. The one I wanted, you know how we love women. Some women love diamonds. <laughs> yeah. They had one was like a, a big giant diamond. And I'm like, me, me, me. But we were all <laughs> fighting over it. Of course, we could have just gone online and ordered it. So anyway, um, anyway, uh, do check out her site. Very excited to... Um, to have her as our new sponsor. Of course, we still have our old sponsors, but um, we're just so excited to be able to um, uh, showcase her wonderful jewelry and her fun, um, her fun business. So anyway, Stacy, thank you so much for the necklace and the earrings, and I love them. And um, much luck to you in your business. And please sponsor us again. <laughs> How's that? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Um, um, anyway, I'm hoping that I'm wondering, um, Andy, if we should go ahead and 
message Janine. Okay. And do you want to go ahead and do that? Yep. Okay. So anyway, um, am I, I got to tell you guys, so I talk about things sometimes in my house and Andy and I have had some really crazy experiences together. Um, you know, deja vu, all kinds of weird things happening with Jackie and Jackie will be on a little later. She's coming in. She's late too today. And, um, but I haven't had any really big, um, paranormal things happening. Now I've had stuff fly in my house and move and all kinds of stuff. But I swear the other day that, um, I really, you know, am hearing talking. So like some talking in my house. So I know something's going on. As I told you guys before, um, my husband decided that he was moving furniture in all my wards since I'm Wiccan trained um, in my house are always placed in the corners of my home and energized for protection, right? And when one day I came in and, you know, you can just kind of feel like the energy is different. When people come into my house, they totally re relax. They say, oh, the energy is so good in here. And I'm so proud of that. Um, and this time I'm like, what's different? Because stuff was, you know, little things just didn't seem right. And then I looked on the fireplace. Lo and behold, all my stones that are supposed to be in the corners of my house, keeping my house safe, are lined up on the fireplace. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> it's not good. So um, I'm scrambling to re-energize my home. Always know that you need to clear your home and bring in good energy and fortify it. Now, I got a, a, a message from somebody today that there is something going on in a home back east in a basement. And um, they described this half shadow guy, half creature with long nails and i'm like okay and they're like like oh could this be grandpa you know you know what i'm like <laughs> no it's not grandpa i said what you have there sounds to me like it's a portal that needs to be closed and he needs to be put back in because he's talking and influencing the little uh, 11 year old girl right now and telling her to do bad things the first thing that i wrote really to them was was there any ouija board brought into the house so find out now. And so I got a message back that the little girl went to school and she had her phone and she doesn't know anything about Ouija boards. She downloaded two Ouija board apps, games mm. or something. And so they said, she doesn't even know what it is, but this, this thing is talking to her. And I said, this is not good. Telling her to, bad, to do bad things, you know, be mischievous and do bad things. And but they see this thing. And so um, this other person said they saw it. So they're going to send us some pictures. So we're going to put the photographs on. And um, mostly I wanted the pictures so that I could um, put it. Uh, hi, Molly. Put it in front of some people that can um, do remote clearing because the thing needs to be put back in and that needs to be sealed. And so I told her a lot of things to do. And I sent her uh, Protective Magic, the book. Um, Jackie is saying she'll be on in a few minutes. Uh, so I sent the book and I said, get to a, any Catholic church. And I want you to take a big spray bottle, go in and fill it up. And like there you go. Is it, do you have holy water? I took a black yeah. marker and put it yeah. on there. So like nobody would use it. And I keep mine in the fridge. Holy water is I not pure. Four guys. of them. <laughs> oh my God. I love you. You're my hero. <laughs> I have I have a little thing left. I have to well I can consecrate it myself. Anybody can consecrate your water, your oil for anointing. And Andy and I are doing ordained ministers too. So uh but it's so convenient to go and just kind of, you know, just fill yeah. her up, you know. And don't be embarrassed. The first time I went was not a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you don't know where the holy water is. And um, and you spill it all over the floor and you just want to get out of there. Right. You got right. a great big old thing. So and, and then I'm like, do I do the sign of the cross before I walk in or what's I mean, I, I want to appear as if I'm a church, you know, a, a Catholic going and not no. messing up. And I, I had a Walmart bag full of these 
bottles, like four of them, and I'm just dunking them in this huge font. And then there's no. people around, and I was trying to get out of there quick. I'm like, come on, fill up, fill up. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, okay, done. And then out. But, you took it out of the font? The, there's a giant... The spigot? A spigot? No, this one, this church has like this huge, almost like a swimming pool size. Oh. Um, divide that by three, and then that's about what it is. It's like a great big bucket. <laughs> yeah, and it has like a little waterfall in it, so it's always full, I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. It's a big church. Okay. But, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I went in with someone who, there was just a little, uh, hi, Scott. There was this hey, little Scott. font. And, um, you know, with the, it had something on it in a cloth where you dab and you'll do that. And she's like, I said, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm dunking it in. I said, there should be a <laughs> container with a spigot. And she's like, I said, how'd you do it last time? She said, I picked up the bowl. And I was like, are you, is there any cameras? Because this is not <laughs> And turned around and there was the big thing with the spigot, you know, holy yeah. water is a big label on it. <laughs> so I did tell them, um, you know, really what they need is sulfur, which is brimstone, you guys, right? And sprinkle it. And um, and so uh, if you guys, you know, have anything at night that's coming in, you have to clear your house. I will mm -hmm. always, always contact me. I will give you all the information that you need. Private message me. But we will do a, um, a special show on this. It's so important to clear your home, your property and underneath and, you know, and above in which you can do. And then, um, but if you have something at night and you're really afraid or whatever, you can go, go into Etsy, get a big thing of the yellow sulfur. And then you guys now, when I talk about salt, and all of that stuff. And I think, I bet you, I haven't checked. I bet you I have 50,000 people that have looked at my salt video on YouTube. Uh, you don't need to like put a bucket line of salt or sulfur. A little sprinkle works really good. But do put it around, thank you, around your bed, okay? And that will keep, you know, bad stuff away. There's certain things that are so strong when you're doing protective stuff. Sage is one, sulfur, and wild rue seeds. And you would, it would be really good if you could burn the wild rue seeds, but they're actually like seeds. So you just kind of make a cup of like foil, put them in and light it. It's just like if you were going to smudge with sage. And um, a lot of people use the smudge sticks, but I am so afraid all the time. It's like I, you don't need a lot of smoke and the smudge sticks, you know, I have seen people have giant ones. Have you, Andy? Yeah. Like giant ones. I'm like, where are you going with that? You don't need that, you know, for <laughs> no. So um, uh, so I just put loose and I go pick it myself, loose a uh, sage in a natural bowl. You know, a natural bowl would be terracotta or a, a clay or um, an abalone shell, something like that. Hi, Wendy. And um, do you guys see Wendy's uh, profile picture? She oh, paints her, She paints faces. Oh. She did that, guys. That's amazing. Yeah, she has a wonderful uh, business where she paints all that. She, When I first saw it, I... Uh, her um i had like a little mini heart attack because one of my my brother-in-law's best friend's name was cat and cat was um and jackie knows him hey jackie Kat, hi cat was famous and on um ripley's Be believe it and not and all that he transformed his body into uh looking like a cat mm -hmm. unfortunately um he committed suicide eventually, which was really sad. But um, whenever I see that, it's not a bad thing. It's a loving thing, you know. Uh, but it looked just like him. And I was like, oh, my goodness. But Wendy, hello. And um, we got to get together. Hi, Janelle. How are you? See, I, I just love using Be Live TV. And we have people that to say hi to us. It's so great. And... Oh, Cheryl. Yes, Cheryl, you remember Kat. Kat was on um, very popular in Japan, in Asia. They just loved him. And, um, you know, he totally had the 
the teeth permanent done mm -hmm. and the cheeks and the implants of the whiskers and the um uh, the ears and, and tattooed his body. It was just um, amazing that he, that was his totem and he was a, a native American. And so he just, you know, sometimes we blur the lines, I think. Um, oh, Janelle, you had jur jury duty. Well, uh -huh. if you ever come to San Diego, I'll take you to the Whaley house. She where there she lives in San Diego County. Oh, Janelle, then you've been to the Whaley House. Go see that that courtroom with all the <laughs> ghosts, <laughs> for sure. So we have uh, Jan Janine's on. Oh, great. Hey, Janine. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi. Where are you? I'm in Cheeseman Park here in Denver, Colorado. Yes. All right. What, what is that park about? So this park is actually extremely haunted. Lots of going ons here. Um, it used to be a cemetery and all the bodies are still here. In the park? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hi, mommy. I'm going to go play with Mr. Smith that died in 1823. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Oh, wow. What do you know about the, oh, well, first of all, how are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be oh, on with you guys. Oh, yeah, we're excited. Well, tell us a little bit about where you're standing. Are you right. by any graves or what? So I'm on top of some graves right now. And this is the main sign for the entrance for the, the cemetery here. Cheeseman Park. Um, and the story with this one is um, a long story. You know, they started burying people here in 1859. Um, and in the early uh, 1900s, there was a hospital that was put in nearby where they kept a lot of people who had tuberculosis. So a lot of them died and were buried here in this cemetery. And then when the park exchanged hands, the guy who took over wasn't taking care of it. So the city stepped in and said, this is the land. We're going to take it over. They gave the families 90 days to get their loved ones remains out of the park before they that's crazy dispose of the head headstones there's no headstones they bulldoze them down and turned it into a city park are they idiots i mean that's so that is not a good thing so there's no place like do they have a little uh a little brass thing saying there's a dead body here or no there's no memorials here in this part to let you know that you are on top of a cemetery. And the sad oh thing Oh my is, gosh. The sad thing is um, there's a lot of restless spirits here because the way things went down, they paid this gentleman a dollar ninety per grave to start digging up some of the graves of the family members that wanted their people moved. And so what he did was he's like, huh, a dollar ninety per grave. If I break these bodies and put them in three children's caskets, I can make more money. Oh, so my God. He dismembered the bodies and put them in smaller <sighs> caskets. Oh, my gosh. When wow. was that? Was, what year was that? Was that right away when they? Yeah, it was in the, the mid-1900s when they started taking it apart. Who does and, that? Oh, my so, gosh. The area lining the park has a bunch of really old colonial um, mansions. And the people who lived there, when they were taking everything down and turning into a park, started noticing a lot of banging on their windows and their outside walls. And um, nobody was out there. Yes, there was. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, my gosh. That's insane. I mean, I... I, I I can't wrap my mind around somebody doing that or even even government officials thinking this is okay. Yeah, any cemetery that falls into disarray for a certain numbers of year, the government can come in and turn it into anything they'd like. And they do not have to remove the bodies. Wow. Oh, my gosh. So are you going to do a little um, 
mediumship or talk to some um, spirits tonight? We're hoping to connect with some tonight while we're here. Well, who's there with you? Right now, I have my sister. Let me see if I can get her in there. This is my sister, Jennifer. Hi, guys. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. It, it, interesting thing about this park is that it said that when the when the sun starts to go down, people see headless bodies walking through the park. Oh my gosh, Janine, you on mine? You're sideways. You, mm-hmm. She's sideways. You're yeah. Sideways. There you go. Now we have both of you. Great. Oh my gosh, headless bodies, and a lot of people have seen this walking through the park. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. You know, they need to be, um, go ahead. Uh, So the last time we were here, we were looking, there's a tree here called the devil's tree. Anybody who touches this tree, their hand turns black and it doesn't wash off. So the tree. Are you going to touch it? (laughs) No, they put a chain link fence around the tree. I've yet to find it. we're, We're on a hunt for this devil's tree. But um, awesome. when we were looking for wow. it years ago, I was asking Spirit to help me find this devil's tree. And I got, I got a little frustrated. I kind of taunted a little bit, which I don't ever recommend to anybody. And yeah. I got my arm grabbed so hard that it left a white handprint on my arm that was there for three months. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, uh, my yeah. God. So you guys take, you know, no, you never do that. And and not I've talk. been on a lot of different things where people, especially young kids, or, or you just watch TV, you guys, and they're yelling at the spirits. No, do not do that. It's not a good thing. Always oh show my respect. Gosh. Always show respect. Yes. They were once living as well. Um. Well, I'm excited about that tree, but as it sounds like there needs to be soul rescues and stuff. Do you ever think about doing a soul rescue there, or is there just so many? There are so many, but you know what? I think that I'm going to try to plan a trip where we can get a bunch of mediums together and come out here and do some um, crossing over for sure. Oh, that would great. be awesome. Yeah, it's, it's so important. Of, if any. A lot of these souls are wandering, unsure of what's going on because their their resting place was disturbed in such a horrible manner. Well, not only that, their head is missing, for goodness sakes. You know, well, yeah. um, not a good thing. Definitely. I imagine um, if people don't know what we what we mean when we say soul rescue or crossing over, it's meaning that they're earthbound and they do. We want them to go to heaven. We're going to call it the afterlife. We want them to go to a better place instead of wandering. Like like Janine, they just don't, maybe they don't know they're dead or they don't know what's going on or, you know, the other side isn't coming for them and, or they, they missed the bus for sure. Um, that was a lot of crazy stuff, um, you know, uh, disturbance there when all of that happened. Debbie, do you happen to have a pen and paper with you? Yes, I do. Okay, I am getting the name Reginald Williams. Reginald Williams and the year 1868. Okay. Uh, I want to do a little bit of research on him later because he, he's okay. he's here with us right now. Yeah. Yes, I feel, I feel you here. And Andy, you can, we can also try remotely. You know, we everybody has to know that um, I do readings for people all over the world. So we can do remote healing. We can also do remote viewing. And we can also connect to the other side. So Reginald Williams. Now, Reg, Reginald's not happy that um, there's a lot of parties that take place here at this park. Hmm. He says it's supposed to be a place of rest. Oh, you know, that's, that happens, you know, a lot where people go in and, um, you know, there's partying, partying. But also I was reading, probably it was at turn of the century that the people were, um, I saw photographs of people having picnics, you know, lunchtime picnics in the cemetery at their loved one's graves. I never knew people did that, you know, because I grew up, nobody did that. 
So that's amazing. But it is a peaceful place to be, but need to be respectful also. And um, so are you going to tell him that, um, what are you going to tell him, Janine? I'm actually kind of just communicating a little bit with him right now to see if there's something he wants said or known. Andy, can you can you quickly go on and just Google his name? Yeah. Thanks. Maybe we can get something. That would be great. Yes, if we could if we could figure out some more about him. Do you think he has black hair? He has dark hair. He has some graying on the side, though. Mm -hmm. I'd say uh, he's in his 70s. Yeah. And I'm getting... He's wearing, like... To me, what I'm seeing is, like, a dark green. Like, almost a full... Full suit of green. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. He's pointing out his shoes. He, want, he wants you to notice his shoes. Because he, he took great pride in polishing those shoes <laughs> oh, I like his shirt <laughs> oh, let's see so Reginald are you buried in the area where I'm standing okay actually Reginald says that he is buried across the street here okay. oh my goodness He was he was a businessman. He owned his own business. And he lived he lived in the nearby area. And he said his his house still stands. Wow. Wow. Oh, then we we might be able to find the records then. And he likes his new owner. He likes the new owners that have moved in. They moved in he's saying seven years ago but he really likes them okay. because they're they're restoring it oh, that's cool he says that when they <laughs> he's funny um he says that when they're picking paint colors and stuff he nudges them in the right direction because sometimes they're off on what should be there <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm writing this all out for you so that you'll have it. Thank you so much. I should have brought a notepad with me. I'm going to walk with you guys through the park so I can show you some of the structures that are here as well. I'll turn the camera when we get when we get closer to some of the areas. Yeah. Do remember that we're recording this so you can go back also and, and listen if you need to. But I'll write it all out for you. Thank you so much. Andy, did you find anything online? I did. Um, some was from New Zealand with that name. Um, it would probably take a little bit more uh, searching, but it's definitely, uh, I see um, something pop up with 1868 as well with that oh name. Gosh. So you're, awesome. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. You know what it's reminded me is like a Beetlejuice when they were remodeling the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's funny. Are they re are they remaking that movie? They're supposed to be making a second one. Oh my goodness. I wonder if it can be as good as the first. I don't know. It was so <laughs> it was so good. It really was. Okay. I love that movie. I, I always get scared when they're remaking them or trying yeah. to do sequels. Yeah. You know, I was uh, just in, off the thing, off, you know, um, I saw Winchester and I was so disappointed. I thought it would be scarier. It was okay, though. I yeah, like I, scary. I still haven't seen it. And I like them scary, too. Yeah. Just one time, one, one little bit, I was like, whoa. And then I was like, it's over? What happened? Yeah. yeah. Like little jump scares, I guess. Yeah. Janine, is your sister psychic? She does have some, she does have some sensitivity, but I wouldn't say psychic. Okay. 
<laughs> she did grow up in the house with me that was very haunted as a, like when we were children. So I see them and sometimes I hear them, but like they don't really always communicate with me. Mm. Oh, okay. You know, everybody has their gifts or times that they're sensitive when they see something or hear something. And, um, you know, my husband was a non-believer. He didn't want to know anything. And we're sitting there and the remote goes flying across the room, you know, floating. <laughs> and, and, and it stops at his toes and his shoes, you know. And so I think somebody was saying, hey, look, yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> Right. But, uh, but he is, he's know. not sensitive. Yeah. So, I mean, but he's not sensitive and he's not open to it and he doesn't want to see it. When I point something out, something's moving, he just stiffens up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. No, not going to look. Look, look. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, we all have our own comfort zone. But I'm just saying that at sometimes you will see something and maybe you'll never see some anything else again or you hear a voice. Andy, Andy says hello. That's, that's my neighbor next door. Hey, Andy. <laughs> hey, <Hi>. neighbor. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera around so you guys can kind of see what we're seeing. Okay. Some of the older homes that are here. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Look. That's huge. This next one that we're coming up on is one of my favorites. It's just this. <clears throat> Excuse my breathing. So, <laughs> is, this is this is Denver, right? This is Denver, Denver Colorado. Okay, so that was like, a, a, you know, going way back, and they were. Um, um, Building these uh, opulent houses and stuff, you know. Oh yeah! Look at that. You know, Janine, you're you're pretty darn close to the Stanley Hotel. Are you going to make it there too? We were actually up there hiking in that area this morning. Oh wow! Wow, that's so amazing house. We'll be staying over in the Stanley um, when I come to visit in December. Oh okay. Well, Andy, you were. Did you do something there or? Are... Yeah, we we had events planned in Estes Park, um, probably in the same exact area you are, Janine. And um, I I think we still have something planned. Uh, Medium Brian Brian Bowles, he uh, wanted to do like seances um, in the Stanley. And it was kind of scheduled for October, but it's it hasn't been set in stone yet. So, wouldn't well, that, that would... be awesome? That'd be awesome oh, yeah. to do uh, readings. Great. I love to do seances in really neat locations like that four story theater and stuff. And it got so busy and so so crazy, and the spirits just coming in one after another. And the readings were just spot on. It just you know heightens with the energy. So, oh look at that! Look Another at that beautiful, house. another beautiful home. Wow, it's like three stories and, or something. That's amazing. And it's something we don't see in San Diego. All this green. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Unless you're on the golf courses. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're coming up now on the area where I was grabbed. We'll see if there's any actually a video over here to, this evening. Um, on the other side of this fence that we're coming up on is the Denver Botanical Gardens. Around the park, was that, does anybody know a long time ago, was that just residential only? Was it was. There businesses? It was all housing. Okay. And, op and open spaces. Okay. Sage. <laughs> Is that sage? On the ground, there was some sage laying over here. I wonder oh, if somebody cool. else grabbed Oh, yeah. You want if you want to be protected, you put a little sage in your pocket. 
All right, well, here's the trees that we were standing under when, uh, when I decided to taunt when I shouldn't have. And uh, my arm was grabbed. That same day, my sister came home with lots of scratches. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, when she, uh, when she got grabbed, I started to say a prayer, and it, it got mad, and it scratched my arm. Oh, my gosh. It had to be pretty strong for it to not have dissipated or backed off from a prayer. So um, we're getting into some strong energy then. Yeah, like I said, the, the hand mark was white, and it lasted for three months on my arm. It did not go away. I think that we need to get a caravan and go out there and find that tree because I'm, I want to know. We should plan and, a road trip. But they fenced it off because they were, did they think somebody was going to happen to, I mean, the tree was going to be detrimental to the tree or, or that something really was going on? I think it was mainly because people were touching it and the black wasn't coming off of their hands. Like, you you could not wash it off and so they just did it as a precautionary you think they you know run it through some lab tests and find out what's going on with the bark and everything but mm. yeah the legend ar around that tree is that it's a portal to hell oh dear <laughs> you first you first <laughs> <laughs> that's why they call it the devil's tree oh my god can be, you guys. There's portals all over the place, and uh, you have to be careful. Amazing. I think that what we're coming up on now is kind of why um, he was upset, because they do have an amphitheater that they've put in. Mm. There's lots of uh, bands that come out and play. Um, okay. I'll show you a view down below in just a second. Um, there's a lot of people who come out and play volleyball and other sports here. They have jogging trails. It's beautiful there. It's gorgeous. Just over this way, I'll take you this way, there's a rose garden. So I'm feeling like just in the area I'm standing right now, that there's children's graves here. So um, can you remind me to the left of the amphitheater, please? Yes. Thank you. And hopefully you guys will be able to see because it is starting to get dark here. We're an hour ahead of you. Man, if I was like the governor or something, I'd be getting some kind of that that radar that and finding out where these are and marking them because this is so far. Yeah, to give them some some respect that they were here. Yeah, that is like that's the most amazing story, Janine. It's just amazing. Well, it just goes to show like humans can be so greedy. For money, he, he dismembered bodies. Like, who does that? Well, I can't get over the fact that they decided that they would just take the headstones off. You know? Well, That's... you know, we do, we do have a cemetery in San Diego that had the same circumstances. That's true. I want to go there, Janine. And I know that there's a concern about going in the ravine. But I just kind of feel like I want to go there. Well, they've made it to where you cannot get down there anymore, but oh, we can, but we can sit on the edges of it. That's where I had my scary experience. It was actually at the Pioneer Park there in San Diego. Mm -hmm. One of the only times I've run. Oh my gosh. And you know me, I don't run from anything. I run towards it. <laughs> yep. Me too. <laughs> I haven't ran away from anything yet, but you know. I tell anybody, if I'm going to run, you better be going, too. 
Better run faster than me because I'm running from something scary. <laughs> Although, let me confess this to everybody. When I was a young teenager, I went to one of those scary haunted houses where they're real people and they can touch you. And I did get to a point where I took this older, I'm not going to say elderly, older lady and just picked her up and threw her at them and ran. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Debbie, we need to do haunted houses this October. <laughs> oh. oh, gosh, I haven't re thought of that forever. No. Scream in the Dark, it was called, something like that. Oh, I remember Scream in the Dark. I remember Scream in the Dark, and they take over big buildings and the most awesome uh, makeup and hearses and Frankensteins and everything. And I don't remember what it was, but I, I remembered I wanted out of there. You know. Yeah, I went to the Scream in the Dark when they had it in College Grove. And I came out holding somebody's hand that I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And I just threw people. <laughs> Take them. She was probably you probably thought she was older or elderly. She was probably like my age now. <laughs> So that fountain was just gorgeous. I know, especially with the, the sun coming down right now. Just beautiful. Oh, oh yeah. So Over downtown Denver. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. And there's three of those. There's three of those uh, fountains. Oh, my gosh. How big is this park? It is 80 acres. Wow. Whoa. Huge, right? Yeah. Is there just one area that's consecrate, uh, consecrate, and what do you call it? Where most of the um, graves were, or is it? Are they anywhere? Um, I believe it's mainly this front section where the graves were. Oh, okay. Hmm. But as you can see, this park is very busy, even in the off yeah. season. It's not really fully into summer yet, and the park is full. Mm -hmm. Janine, say something. Sorry, guys, I had a, a call coming through. It might have paused us there for a second. Oh, okay. It is a huge, and there's a lot of people around. Yeah, yeah I bet summer it's busy. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Mm hmm So where are you going now, Janine? Oh, my volume is doing something weird. Janine? Sorry, I can't hear you guys. Let me check my volume. Okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Hello? Technical difficulties again happen all the time to us, guys. And that's part of working with the other side. Yeah. And and technical stuff. <laughs> all right. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. yes. Yes, we can. Yep. Can you hear us? Did she freeze? I think somebody's messing with us. <laughs> you do? Okay. Here. Here she's in the lobby again. Okay. So I will add her to the broadcast. Okay. All right. It's so cool though having her go remote. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're gonna do it on all of our events that are coming up. All the ghost tours. It's gonna be so much fun. And I'll take tell take you guys via video to Savannah with me. Oh, please do that. That'd be great. Hi, Janine. Hi, guys. Sorry about that. Lost you for a second. Okay, that's <laughs> fine. But anyway, yeah, we should definitely plan a trip out here as a group. It's a very active. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we can. Through, I'm seeing lots of spirits just kind of lingering around. Okay. Is there any shadow people? Or are you just seeing kind of light white things or what? 
No, they look like regular people, but they're just more transparent. Okay. I know at um, the cemetery that's closest to me is Janine and Chris see a lot of uh, shadow people. Hi, Carlos. Um, that would be, uh, what's the name of that one, Debbie? Uh, Dearborn. Dearborn, yes. Lots of shadow figures. Um, white, gray, and black. Shadow wow. figures. Mm. My goodness. Janine, do you think the shadow figures there are just um, are mischievous? Are they evil? Are they okay? Out at Dearborn? Yes. Um, some of them are mischievous, and some of them, that's just how the spirit is choosing to present. Okay. I've never felt anything evil out of that park, ever. Or that cemetery. Just the coyotes. The coyotes. <laughs> Well, and I and I'm terrified of frogs, and they like to they like to come out and chirp a lot when I'm there. I, I'm I'm not a fan of frogs. <laughs> <laughs> when we were at the uh, memorial park, there's a memorial park that's tucked away, and it's just in a crazy place. It's surreal. And I was down there with one person, and the other people were up on a bridge where the girl was thrown off to her death, and um. The girl started talking and saying, um, if if you're here, have those because the frogs were just crazy. Just just have the frogs be quiet. And immediately there was silence. It was crazy. And she kept doing that. And she said, now have them, you know, make noise and then they'd go crazy. And she kept doing that. It was just amazing. I was like, OK, well, you're communicating, but pretty much it's just yes and no things. But it was crazy. At Pioneer Park, there's one oak tree that likes to communicate by dropping things, but it doesn't drop them straight up and down. It will throw them at the back of your head. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and um, we've been out with plenty of people. I've taken a group of 30 out there. That tree is dead silent until I step underneath it. Mm. Uh, Janine, and are you going to do some ghost tours soon? Yes, so coming in July, I will be doing the Haunted Historic uh, Tours out at Mount Hope Cemetery, where I will take you to some of the San Diego's most famous people who are buried there. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, I can't wait. We'll put up all that information, too, so if people are in the area, Southern California and San Diego, you can sign up for the ghost tours. That's, that's going to be great and fun. And then at the end of next month, I will be having my book launch. Yay! Yeah. Party! Let's have a party. We should. Especially an online party. Let's do a launch on our sh one of our shows, one of our Friday shows. Let's do it. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll give away some gift cards and stuff. It'll be great. Oh, and we, we'll, we're always up for a party. <laughs> we'll even give away a copy of my book. Signed. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I guess we're exempt from trying to win. <laughs> but that's awesome. Thank you, you Janine. We'll you, all get a, you all get a signed copy because I love you. Yes. Oh, thank you. You can have ours, too. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to like send it to everybody to sign and get it back. So where are you at now, Janine? So we're walking back towards the front. I was going to show you a few more of the, the lovely houses that are in this area. Oh, okay. Gee, thank your sister for being there too. That's um, fantastic that you guys can come and do this for us. It's great. I, I took her away from moving for a little while, so I kind of oh. distracted her a bit, but um, it was a good distraction, right? So worth it. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, one of these uh, one of these times we'll have to go live um, just with our childhood stories of what we experienced. Would you both be guests? That'd be great. We will totally do that. Oh, great. How fun. We'll, we'll plan that. Add it to the calendar, Andy. <laughs> we'll 
We're going to do it. Yay. <laughs> we love, don't we love the ghost stories? We and do. They're so much fun. And we make we, sure that they're real ones, guys. And we need to plan another bonfire so we can tell our stories. That will be fun. Oh, that was fun down at the beach. Okay, this is my house. Oh, oh my gosh. I love it. Gorgeous, right? Yeah. It is. It's like a presidential kind of an architecture to it. Or like the Home Alone house. (laughs) They call... Excuse me. They call the style colonial mansions. Mm -hmm. Mm. I love colonial. That's awesome. Where's that house? (laughs) I'm looking for it. It's the the back side. Oh, it's like ivy or something all over it. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Oh, I love it. Jeez. Oh, that's neat, too. Well, what a beautiful area, but what a tragic circumstances there. Um, just an unbelievable story, you guys. It's, it's very sad. I wonder but, if you can go to the library and find out some more information and where that tree is. Well, I'm telling you, like, I am deep in in research now because I want to see that tree. (laughs) Yeah, the library should have some stuff. I know here in San Diego, the library had some very old papers of where there's a fountain of youth. I mean, the maps and everything. There was a big mystery up in um, San Isabel Mission where there's, like, symbols that are on the tombstones or the headstones and rocks and Mm. And all kinds of stuff. And they have never solved that. And there's all kinds of uh, literature in the old files at the libraries. Yeah, I'd love to go to, like, uh, Massachusetts area where they have all the really old, you know, like Salem Witch Trials and all of the old. uh, They have skull and crossbones on an actual, like, Beetlejuice's tombstone. Um, they used to do stuff like that, I guess, back then. So. That's totally on my bucket list. We should plan that, too. <laughs> There's so many places we want to go. Now, if this park wasn't so large, I would walk you guys over um, just on the other side, like the absolute other side of this park, um, is the Mary Brown house. The Mary Brown that was on the Titanic. Oh. 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 So her house is also here. Ah. Area. My goodness. Very historic. Wow. <clears throat> now I need to go up, look at the real estate prices. <laughs> How much are these things worth? Well, I'll tell you that in my research, because I plan to be here in 2021, the housing is not much cheaper than San Diego. <laughs> Oh, oh my going. gosh. Mm-hmm. Denver has really, um, really gotten big. Uh, it just in the last, I don't know, six years from what Brian and his husband, uh, John, had said. So it's really and, booming. Well, just in the five years I've been here, I've noticed a big change. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I well, used to- to think, you know, it would be worth it anyway, even because the rents are maybe like a hundred, two hundred dollars cheaper than San Diego. Um, but even they're paying two sixty for gas right now, so it's not even that much cheaper than what we're paying. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm paying three seventy five. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> so. I think you got us oh, beat well. there. Well, maybe if you find it, you know, if you find a house there, you're not really sure that it's on an old graveyard. That's the kicker. That's very true. But, you know, um, that goes for anywhere that you choose to move. Because I know there's several defunct cemeteries in San Diego that have housing or businesses on them. I'm out of shape. Woo. I'm getting my cardio in today, guys. <laughs> no, we appreciate it. Yeah. Or you can thank us. 
<laughs> Janine, it's been a pleasure having you. I'm just so excited that you could even, um, we'll look into this also, Reginald Williams a little bit and see what's going on. Now, Janine has been on the run for us, literally, and usually we'll stop and we'll talk to several spirits and find them, um, you know, quite close and things like that. But she's been so generous with her time to show us all these lovely houses and tell us this amazing story. But I just feel so tra like it's so tragic, you know, there's got to be so many souls that need to be rescued and, and um, just can't imagine that happened. It's just a, a moon, you know, I just can't. Yeah. It's, it's horrific actually. I mean, and then, I mean, some of these people didn't have mem family members to stand up and say, hey, don't do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or how come Uncle Joe is now just three feet? I mean, <laughs> come on. And that's, that's, that's the saddest terrible. part. Because with the, with the Calvary Cemetery in San Diego that they turned into Pioneer Park, at least those people's bodies are still buried. Um, this guy yeah. dug up bodies and piece them out so he could make more money. It's sad. It's, you know, those grave, grave robbing and all this stuff is so old and it's just, you just wonder where their, their bots are. It's so greedy. Terrible. So I'm at the front of the, uh, the I almost called it a cemetery. <laughs> I'm at the front of the park. I'm just going to turn the camera on so you can get the vast view of how big, and this is only about a third of the park. Wow. I mean, it's huge. Wow. It's just beautiful. That's gorgeous. It is. We have nothing like that. And it's sad. Wow. Over the last three years that I've been coming to visit my sister in Denver, they're starting to build and get rid of a lot of their open spaces. Before we notice, mm. <laughs> just like San Diego, yeah. you know, if there's San an open Diego, spot, they're going to build on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, it's really so built up here. They're, they're relocating all the meerkats, you know, that lived in these areas for years. They're cap capturing them and relocating them. And some of them, some cases, they're actually killing them. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Last time I was here, I was actually quite surprised that this one park we went to had them just out in the wild. But wow. they're, now building, they're now building over that area hmm. and oh dislocating those, those poor animals. You know what? It's the way of things are going everywhere because the population gets bigger. We need space and we need housing and and our you know natural resources and our animals are suffering but it's very sad it's, it's the way it is well you guys we're coming up on almost um 7 38 right now so it's probably time to uh, just about say goodbye janine is there anything else that you need to tell us about or show us um, not for now, but I may um, go on deadtalk.com and go live at another cemetery tomorrow. Okay, great. Oh, great. great. That's Facebook, the Dead Talk um, fan page. Uh, Janine, that'll be really exciting. And just go on and let everybody know if you get to give them a little heads up. But I sure want to be there and watch. Mm hmm Yes, I'll definitely let you guys know bef uh, a couple hours before I head out that way. Um, I had an interesting story from a year ago when I first visited that cemetery that I'll share with you guys, and we'll see if there's any uh, new activity while I'm there. Oh, great. So yeah. I, um, so all you have to do um, is to kind of watch uh, Psychic Fixes or the Dead Talk, and there'll be a little blurb of when she's going to be on. Even if you don't catch her live, it still will be recorded and on the Facebook um, page, The Dead Talk. So thank you, Janine, for coming, and thank your sister also. 
<laughs> bye guys. Right. Thanks for having bye. us. Thanks Thank so you much. Me. Take care. Have a good night. You too. Yeah. Oh wow. It's hard to believe, my goodness, you guys. Yeah. People are insane. Uh so there's you know, it takes mediums and to and psychics to go out and kind of try to undo some of this stuff. To go in. What I do a lot of is I clear grief out of the areas of the um cemeteries because not that the person was grieving as much as the people that come to the grave. And I just love to change the energy in there and do big areas. Um one time in Dearborn, I had um, um, somebody walked up uh, that has um, mediumship 10, you know, um, abilities, mm -hmm. yeah. abilities. And she gave me a name and I tuned in because she she was been looking at for her. I hear this lady wants me and looking, looking, looking for her. And I go, what's her name? And she told me, I said, she's telling me she's by the the faucet up the hill. Go find the tall faucet up the hill. She went up the hill to the tall faucet. She was right next to it. So I ended up there with one other person. And it was so sad. And I said, the lady isn't dead yet. <laughs> you know, guys. So her mom is here. But this lady here is not dead yet. And she's in a home. And she's connected here. But I said, there needs to, she's afraid and there needs to meet, do some healing here. So as I went and did healing, one of the, the people that were there almost fell over. And the other one was just shaking like this because the healing just came in and took over that and took all the grief out and all of that. And I think I thought she would probably be passed in about two or three months from then. And I never went back to look, but you know, when we start doing the tours and stuff, when we end up at Dearborn, I'll go back to see if she's passed on by now, but um, we can go in, we can be beneficial as Janine is crossing souls over to the other side. Um, sometimes they don't know where they're at and everything. So it's like we, what we do in our group is we bring someone from the other side to, um, wow assist them in crossing. And there's a lot of people that will say, and this is just the way that we believe in how we do business. So a lot of people that will say, and I've heard it like um, they're, you know, just telling the spirit, there's a door, open the door and go there, go find the light. Well, did you just open a portal? <laughs> you know, let's let the people on the other side come in convince them and take them so we talk to them and everything and then we call in an ancestor or loved one a friend to come from the other side an angel and take them over we do need to get more people on the other side to heaven so that the balance of good and evil will be on the side of good and um some circumstances have happened and I'm not going to get into them where it seems like there's something coming or something. I'm going to just be a little cryptic here coming back. And we do need to make sure that we're getting the balance of good up, raising that up and getting more on that side um, because we're going to need it. And more and more people, I don't know if you guys catch that, but more and more people are seeing stuff, getting into energy, healing, you know, Reiki, mm -hmm. uh, the paranormal, and, you know, just look at all the shows that are on now. And it's, it, you know, so we know something's going on and we need to start doing all the good stuff that we can and um, facilitating um, these people crossing over and teaching these people and being mentors to people that need to know how to do energy work. And it's so important. I mean, we need to get you know, some of this crazy stuff stopped in the world. It's it's some really bad stuff going on out there. Like I said, um, I can't get into too much, but it seems like something that was put away has come back, got out. So some some people out there in the world that are going to be great champions for good and for God will be working on that. What's Katrina say? So sorry, uh, guys. She's got to go to bed. Her. Wow. I just love our fans are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so Friday we'll have our, our people from Ireland, which is always <laughs> a lot of fun. 
Now, you guys, Friday will be uh, live readings and we'll be answering your questions. Now, um, ske scheduled right now yeah. is um, we're going to do a pride, a pride show because we are we support um, the gay community and um, wholeheartedly support everyone and so we are going to um have a special show and on that show i have asked um zoe now i don't have her last name because i don't think i can even pronounce it but we will have that information on online for you guys zoe is an entertainment uh performance ar artist she will blow you away she has if you have ever seen celtic women you know sing that's her voice Oh, and wow. She, yes. And she grew up uh, seeing and talking to fairies, the fae. And so she can speak their language. So um, she is just the most wonderful creature that I've ever met. And she is going to, um, fingers crossed, be able to be here. I said she could be in costume if she wants to. But she is going to go ahead and, and be here on Friday. That's the plan. And um, we're going to get her story. We're going to talk about metaphysics and music and her role in the world. And I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. Awesome. And we're going to give away, I won't even say what it is, but there'll be a gift card. Yeah. <laughs> you have to come back for that and you have to stay for the whole show. Did you guys see the, yeah. um, the chocolate dip cone um, picture on um, Psychic Fix's fan yeah. page, Facebook? Cheryl no. went out. She got her dip cone with her gift card. <laughs> it's posted. You can see it. Made me hungry. Not fair. <laughs> so, you guys, um, I think it's time for us to go to the lobby. Okay. And I hope everybody enjoyed this show. Bye, Jackie. Okay. Bye. Bye, Jackie. Bye, everybody. See you in the lobby. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. See you Friday, 630.